So no big deal to some of you, but as you're about to see, others feel quite differently. I'm lost. You lost? Where do I go from here? Hey, what do you think about the new roundabouts? The new what? The new roundabouts. Oh, they suck. ABC 7 making your daily commute a little bit stressful tonight. Buckle up. We're putting you in the front seat. Change on the way to Las Cruces. Construction is officially underway on what's about to be the city's new living room of sorts. We'll talk about it. And one of the most recognizable wrestlers is feeling the heat of social media tonight. What in the world did Hulk Hogan do or say that has you leaving us comments like Rush, who says, not a surprise to me at all, but I don't trust anyone who hides behind sunglasses 24-7. I feel you, buddy. You're buzzing about this tonight. Nicole, you have the weather forecast. Another triple-digit day in the books. Are we expecting even hotter temperatures this weekend? We'll talk about your weekend forecast and storm track weather. Weekend is here, Nicole. It's all next on ABC 7 at 9. Get ready. You become part of the day's news right now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley at Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the El Paso Las Cruces CW. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday night for ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. I'm Bob Harp. We'll have all the top stories and the stories you're buzzing about tonight in social media. And I'm Nicole Gomez. Bob, I'm tracking the heat. It More was heat. hot today. It's going to be a hot weekend, but we'll talk about the numbers. I'll even compare this year's temperatures to last year's temperatures. But again, it was hot today. We've got a shift in moisture. We'll talk about what that means for your weekend. That's all coming up in just a bit, Bob. Yeah, you were all friendly a little while ago. Now you're <laughs> breaking out the heat. All right, thanks, Nicole. Check back in with you in just a second. First up tonight, our top story. A pair of roundabouts in South El Paso. It really has you talking tonight, and some of you are scratching your heads because of it. This is what Paisano and Alameda used to look like. This was before the construction began last year. There was an overpass, you might remember, and a lot of congestion at times. Well, this is what it looks like now. No more overpass and two new roundabouts. We found drivers are confused and caught off guards, but signs like these are posted showing you which lanes to be in. Some say they don't help much. ABC 7's Evan Fullen has our top story. And although it may seem confusing now, if you follow these simple steps, you'll be sure to get the hang of it. What do you think about these roundabouts? I don't like them. Why don't you not like them? Because uh, it's all confusing. Oh, they suck. Why do they suck? Because they keep traffic. They stop traffic. Is it confusing for you? Or? Yeah, pretty much. I'm lost. You're lost? Where do I go from here? Uh, so you don't know how to navigate No, these? it's my first time. Are you like these El Pasoans who are confused by modern roundabouts like these? If so, take a moment and look at this sign. It shows you exactly where you need to be. Just like any other intersection, if you want to turn right, stay in your right-hand lane. Now, if you want to turn left or make a U-turn, stay in your left-hand lane. If you want to keep driving forward, either lane will work. The rest is up to you. Simply look out for drivers already in the roundabout because they have the right of way. So we're about to come up to the roundabout. I'm going to yield, make sure there's no pedestrians. There's a car coming right now, so we're going to have to wait. Two cars coming. and then gradually enter the roundabout. These roundabouts are designed to keep traffic moving. The speed limit is 20 miles an hour when using the roads. They actually move a fairly high capacity of traffic uh, very safely. And as confusing as they may be, they are here to stay. Kind of confusing, but okay, we'll okay. get used to it. Yes, ma'am. Luckily, I don't use it enough. Thank you so much. Uh, no Bye -bye. problem. Thank you. And that was ABC 7's Evan Fullen reporting for us. By the way, those new roundabouts, they are there and here to stay, according to everybody else, uh, with uh, the text dot and any other crews that put them there. We want to know what you have to say about it. Do you think they're confusing or do you think, nah, we'll get used to it, they're okay, no big deal? Tell us what you think at KVIA.com on Facebook. And that is exactly where this discussion has been going on since we aired that story at 6 o'clock. We're getting responses from both sides. Blanca telling us, dangerous, I want to see them disappear appear completely. But then you have the other side. Tony saying, I don't know how roundabouts are confusing. That's just a sample of what else you're saying coming up. First, let's get to the other top stories of the day. 
From our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom tonight, it's full steam ahead on the new downtown plaza in Las Cruces. The shovels hit the ground today on the $5 million project at Griggs and Main Street. When all is said and done, we're expecting a stage for concerts and events, a splash pad, and plenty of shaded areas. Heather Stein, we caught up with her, and she told us she moved to Las Cruces from Houston to open up a business just down the street. We came here because we wanted to be a part of downtown, and so the plaza opening is really exciting for us. That new plaza should be completed sometime next year. We do have an update right now on a police standoff that blocked off a neighborhood in El Paso's Lower Valley this afternoon. ABC7 confirms a man wanted by police is now in custody. Police on the scene told our crew that this all began when officers were trying to arrest a man wanted for warrants on the 200 block of Candelaria. That is not far from North Loop in Alameda. The SWAT team was called out eventually and the man reportedly stabbed himself in the stomach several times but then surrendered to police. The latest now out of Louisiana, where a shooting at a movie theater last night left two dead and nine hurt. We have this as breaking news at nine. Authorities now say the suspected gunman, John Hauser, bought the gun he used legally at a pawn shop. This despite a history of mental illness and an arson arrest. Investigators are saying they also found wigs and disguises in a nearby motel room where he'd been renting some space, and again, he was one of those dead. El Paso Water Utility is saying it wants to secure water for future El Pasoans, so it's using a $50 million loan from the Texas Water Development Board to buy 26,000 acres of land out by Dell City. That's to the east of El Paso. The plan is to tap into the groundwater there, process it, and then send it back to the El Paso region. We won't see any of that water, though, until the year 2050. Also tonight, 164 people can now call themselves Americans. Our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom crew was there as well. They were sworn in at the Las Cruces Convention Center. The new citizens come from 19 different countries. Four military service members also received their citizenship today. We'd like to say congratulations to all of them. A live look at traffic right now with the help of our TxDOT traffic cameras. This is I-10 and Landfill over by Trans Mountain and I-10. You can see not many cars on the road right now. Uh, not being told of any closures because of construction work. They usually take a break this time on the weekend. So just be safe out there, folks. If you're going out there tonight, the roads are dry. Two storm track weather, though. Will those roads stay dry for the weekend? You have the million dollar answer for that question, Nicole. Maybe not for the entire weekend, but for tonight. How's that? Tonight, okay. Look, one day at a time. <laughs> Baby but steps. But it's going to get hot. Don't I already feel it. You. Yes, it's muggy. It's yeah. San Antonio like ish. Kind of. It's, not as it's bad, been worse, though, right? It could be worse. Yeah, it could be I'm worse. not always complaining, I promise. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> so <fast>. Let's talk <laughs> about those temperatures right now at the airport. We are still nice and hot out there, El Paso, and pretty much throughout the entire region. We're at 93 degrees, 89 Las Cruces, 84 TRC. We're also in the 90s in Alamogordo. Current temperature, Guadalupe Pass, in the upper 70s. High temperatures today, New Mexico Farm and Ranch. 103, 102 at North Star Elementary School. Loma Terrace also hit a high of 101 and 98 at Mountain View High School. Now, notice on Doppler radar, we're going to take those rain chances out of the forecast for tonight. For El Paso and Las Cruces, as you can see, we're not tracking any rain in the forecast, but we are seeing some showers along the higher elevations. We'll take a look at our future track model through 11 o'clock, where you can see we're still not tracking very much activity, but we'll take a closer look at what you can, can expect coming up in just a bit. We'll also talk about those high temperatures today and the hot weekend that we're expecting to have. We'll talk about those details in just a bit, Bob. All right, Nicole, thanks so much for that. And of course, you at home watching right now, you can connect with us by using the name CU on the CW on Facebook, Twitter, and even Instagram if you'd like to share some photos with us. Of course, the discussions are also underway at KVIA.com on Facebook. Hey, if you have been in El Paso a while, you may hate me for getting a jingle in your head that will probably stay there all weekend, but I'm sure you remember it. Who could forget this campaign, Nicole? 
to get El Pasoans <laughs> off the couch and out onto the streets to exercise. The Paso del Norte Health Foundation was behind this ad and others all aimed at bettering our lives here in the borderlands. So you might be saying, Bob, why are you getting that jingle stuck in my head? Well, because one woman in particular who was the driving force behind those catchy ads, like Walk El Paso Walk and the push to get El Pasoans to stop smoking, Myrna Deckert is her name, and ABC7 confirmed she's retiring. She tells us that she is thrilled to have served and help a community like ours. It's the largest uh, foundation, private foundation, on the entire U.S.-Mexican border. That gives us a tremendous amount of responsibility to, to do things right. Well, thank you so much, Myrna, for all your hard work. She also says that she's doing well after having lung transplant surgery. That was about a year ago, and now she wants to spend some more time with her children and her grandchildren. Best of luck to you, Myrna. Eastwood Heights Elementary closed out its literacy camp with a fiesta. UTEP tutors worked with students one-on-one -on -one to help make reading fun this summer and improve critical thinking skills. You're about to see two really smart kids right now on the CW. Check them out. We read, we did some games including vocabulary words, we did some eye station, we did many different things. Once I start a book, I keep reading it until I finish it, and I just get another one, and another one, and another one, until I get tired of reading and I continue the next day, and this goes on and on again. That is a smart little girl. The camp now is in its sixth year. Well, speaking of reading, a lot of you think a classic is Gone with the Wind, right? Well, coming up tonight at 10, Gone with the Wind is one of the many flicks that you can actually catch at this year's Plaza Classic Film Festival. For some of the movie, or for some, I should say, that movie invokes nostalgia for the Confederacy. Tonight, we are taking a look at how different life was in El Paso back in the 1940s when the movie was a hit. So, speaking of that, you know, racial controversy because of the Confederacy flag in South Carolina this summer. Well, now Hulk Hogan, he is on damage control for some racist comments that he made eight years ago. Today, he was fired by the WWE. The racial slurs were made in a conversation caught, of all places, on a sex tape. The tape is the subject of an invasion privacy lawsuit and filed by Hogan, by the way. The 61-year-old apologized for the comments in which he reportedly used the N-word when talking about a man he believed was dating his daughter at the time. A Hogan fan we spoke with says he feels let down by his childhood hero. It, it, it is a big deal for WWE to you know, maintain face, and they, they did what they had to do. And unfortunately for Hulk Hogan, even though it was eight years ago, that's just something you, you can't do. As you can imagine, Nicole, this one has social media blowing up tonight. Laura says, I don't care how much either way, except for the hypocrisy of the WWE. Racist, sexist, and stereotypical char characters all over that mess. And Fernando says, I find it hard to believe an NFL player punches and knocks out a woman, and no one takes actions for several months. This man uses the N-word, and he gets fired. WWE, you did the right thing. Now, Cesar is saying, why couldn't he stick to the, brother, uh, the word that he knows best? Brother. I had to say it like that. Michael <laughs> saying, and just like that, WWE pretty much cares very little of the legacy left behind. Rush, not a surprise to me at all. But I don't trust anyone who hides behind sunglasses 24-7. I got to say, I don't like anybody who wears glasses all the time either, Nicole. I just got to get that <laughs> out there. his eyes are sensitive to the light. Okay, well, that's, an ex <laughs> that's a reason. Okay. That's an excuse. Let's get to Sandra's <laughs> comment. What's the big deal? Everybody says the N-word these days. Kids, teens, grandmas, theas, etc., etc. Uh, no. And finally, from Victoria, <laughs> political correctness will destroy the United States. Now, this one, of course, the most talked about story on our Facebook page tonight. If you haven't joined that discussion, please feel free to do so right now. And Nicole, back to our top story, what folks at home are saying about those roundabouts. Now, we do have a lot to get to. So first of all, if you are just joining us, this is what Paisano and Alameda used to look like. And then we have another shot of the intersection now that the construction on those roundabouts is completed. Well, drivers told us today they are confused and these signs aren't helping them much so naturally it sparked that discussion and let's get to some of your comments right now like Sergio saying El Pasoans can barely drive let alone follow signs roundabouts are too sophisticated for El Pasoans Everett if El Paso drivers are too dumb to figure out how a traffic circle works they deserve to the scorn that is heaped on them Edgar they are common sense 
Estefania is saying, I don't think that signage is confusing, but those roundabouts aren't helpful. People don't respect signage. Okay, you can join that one on our Facebook page as well. Nicole, coming up in just a little bit, you're going to be telling us what a, a pop is. Now, I'm not talking about popping and locking like the kids do. You're talking <laughs> or weather sort of popping. Pop. <laughs> I'll let we you take are going to talk about the POP, which has been taken out of the forecast for tonight. But what about the rest of the weekend? Details in storm track weather. Quit popping and locking. <laughs> I just wanted to see how many times I could say that. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. You don't just watch the news. You are the news. We'll be right back.